Look, this is a big deal for the Voices of the Black and Gold today. This interview I'm really excited about, so let's just go on and get into it. Without further ado, let's introduce our co-president, general manager of the Black and Gold, Los Angeles Football Club, John hey. Thornton. John, thank you for coming and joining yes. us, man. We appreciate yes. you so much for taking the time. I know that you're super busy with everything, so thank you so much for joining us here at, at Voices of the Black and Gold. It's, uh, it's my pleasure. It's great to be here with you all, and uh, I'm excited. All right. So, yeah, man, uh, first, thanks to Larry, because he got you to come and, and, and you saying, yeah, but uh, it's a big deal for us here at the Voices of the Black and Gold. And, John, you've done an amazing job this year. You know, last year was a bit hard for us and the supporters asked a lot out of you guys mm -hmm. and you delivered in a huge way. I mean, um, you know, we asked you for leaders, you brought leaders. We asked you for uh, veterans, you brought them. And not only did you do that, you brought in some, I mean, high caliber superstars with Gareth and, and, um, and Giorgio. Uh, and to be fair, you've answered a lot of questions about how you got them and things. So I'm going to just skip right into a question about the DP. Uh, you've been very open in saying that we're looking for an attacking DP, but when you got Gareth, did things change on what we might look for now in a DP or are we still the same mindset? Yeah, well, I think, the all of these decisions and considerations are never done in isolation so does gareth inform what the what the right decision would be if we do sign a dp absolutely and so i would say i don't think it has led to a significant departure from plan but certainly every with every week every game we have more information as to what we feel like this team needs to improve our chances of succeeding. So that's a long winded way of saying, yes, it does have an impact. I've always been open in saying, I think we would be wise to invest in the attacking part of the field. What players like Carlos Gareth, the players that we already have across the front line, this is unique in that it may afford us an opportunity to do maybe something in midfield. So we're, we have a, a bit of a, broader scope in terms of what we're looking for but i would still bet that it would be in the, one of the attacking positions very well enough um we're going against nashville which gave a dp contract to an existing player how do you feel about that and again this is a little bit of an added bonus question here but how do you feel about giving uh, existing players designated player contracts yeah i think each team and each player is a case-by-case -case basis so i think for Nashville, making Walker their DP was the right decision for them. He's sort of the bedrock of everything they are. And each club has a different identity as to what that cornerstone piece would be. Um, you know, Carlos was already a DP. He is that cornerstone piece for us in our history. We extended him as a DP. You know, we had talks with players like Edward Atuesta. Were he to stay, would he have been a DP? I would say more than likely he would have been a DP had we not found an agreement to to sell him. So all of these are on a case-by-case -case basis. And what I would say, what we have done at every level of our roster is if a player outperforms his contract, he gets rewarded. And we mm -hmm. try to be as proactive as possible in extending, renewing guys, giving them what they deserve through their play for LAFC. Yeah, John Thornton joined us here on the VOBG podcast, yeah. and I had a chance to to meet you a little bit earlier uh, in the uh, Gareth Bale and Vale, if you may. Uh, we'll, shift, we'll shift a little bit gears and talk about player analytics. I'm sure uh, that's something that you and your team are constantly looking at it. And what are some of the metrics that you and your team are actually using and currently using to evaluate your incoming talent? You know, for example, you take Ily Sanchez. What is the statistical story behind that you know he's bringing a tremendous impact to this team in so far in 2022 you know what is it that he brings to us that only the metrics are showing that you knew it ahead of time and tell me how did peter verms let him go let it go a massive massive <laughs> uh, sign i can't speak to kansas city's decision making other than to say i'm grateful for whatever the reasons they had yes we are and uh, and having said that, Elia was a free agent, so um, I I, yes. I don't know the specifics of his conversations with Kansas City, but he was available as a free agent, and we're certainly grateful for what he can bring. And I think uh, Nick, you mentioned some of the 
you know, learnings from last year as to what we felt we needed. And Elia fit perfectly because we knew we were selling Edward, who was a fantastic player for LAFC. But Elia is a different type of player that plays as that number six role in that he is um, not say Edward was not disciplined, but but Elia is a much more disciplined six. And I think that really was what Steve was looking for um, as more of a facilitator. So Edward would do things dribble three guys and hit a 60 yard pass to Carlos and he'd score. And these very eye catching things that, uh, Celso, as you talk about, you don't need data to see that. That's just what, uh, that's, yeah. I call it obvious to Stevie wonder that it just is there for, um, it, it's so glaringly obvious. What Elia brings is a real knowledge of the position and also, um, a facilitator of the play. And that might be with the ball. It's also positionally how he can adjust, and allow, whether it's Sifu, whether it's Latif, whether it's Kellen, um, to balance and their interdependent movements is, is a big part of what we do in our midfield. He is one of the best people and examples of a professional that I have seen in our league. And yes. that is certainly something that we have been intentional about finding in order to show our young guys, like, this is the path you need to follow. And He's a phenomenal example. You know, one quick anecdote. He, we have a really exciting uh, player in our under 17s who plays his position named Brian Moyado, who is now in the U.S. national team and he has a, an incredibly bright future. But Elie takes time to go and watch his training sessions, to sit down with him afterwards. And it was facilitated by our staff and our technical director, Marco Garces. But that's the type of thing that Elie does and that Elie brings that stats don't show that. What stats right. do show about Elie is his ability to what we do what we call break lines. So we get down to a granular level as to when Elie plays a pass forward, how many players of the opposition does he remove from the play? So if he picks up the ball and he hits a, um, a line breaking pass to Carlos and it bypasses their three midfield and their strikers in this case, we actually tabulate that and we have a, um, a software platform that counts how many defenders a midfielder bypasses. And he is very good at that. And that's a big part of how we play. And, and once you know to look for it, you see it. But that is just one example of what data would show you is Elia's strength. Beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's really good. yeah, yeah. So kind of shifting gears a bit on this one, you know, our, our off season, definitely the with amongst the fans, there was almost a minor meltdown. What were we doing? And uh, I, I think at this point, you've silenced any doubter that was there. But uh, how does how does fan influence? Does it affect your decisions at all? Do you take into consideration? Um, like like how how do the fans like affect your decisions at all, or do they? Um, yeah, it's a good question, um, and I don't know whether this is the answer people want to hear or not. Just the truth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I guess that's always my, my <laughs> policy. What I would say is that from day one, my goal is to recognize that supporters are the lifeblood of any good club. And we are certainly like when you think about how important supporters are to a club, I don't think there is a club that I have come across like LAFC that takes its supporters into account when they make almost uh, basically every decision. Who's the right DP? How do we want to represent LA? Is the team we're putting on the field a product that someone from LA in its diverse backgrounds and with its incredible diversity could come to our stadium and see a team that they can readily identify with? So that is for sure a part of every single decision we make. Now, having said that, my responsibility also is not to blow in the wind with trend and rather be very diligent and um, disciplined in our strategy to deliver that. So in pro sports, you win, you lose, and it's like this. Now, as an example, you take last year and you could say, LAFC for the first time ever didn't make playoffs. Let's uproot everything and start over. And I'm sure that was some people's opinion as to what was required. What we decided based on a very thoughtful and painstaking process that we went through as a postmortem of the season was what does this need? 
and it was a bit more than a t- than a tweak. It wasn't just minor yeah. surgery. There was yeah. definitely, but it, it's about that balance. And you know, and I also understand because I am also a fan of the Dodgers. But I also recognize I don't know ev- all the information that Andrew Friedman and Dave Roberts have to hand when they make a decision. And right. so I can understand when fans get frustrated. I like that we are such an ambitious club that has ha- that has tasted success but wants more. And I I don't see that as pressure. I, I, I see that as a pleasure of being a part of a – a club that's not just here to make up numbers, but there is real uh, expectation to deliver success. And so my job is actually to not get too caught up in noise, but rather take appropriate feedback. But a big part of my job is to deliver what the supporters want. So I I think I'm answering your question and saying, for sure, for sure it comes into account. Um, Candidly, do I read every Reddit post? And people telling me that I'm awful and uh, <laughs> that the club stinks and all the rest of it. No. And I also don't read it now when I'm assuming they think we're great. So um, it's just oh, yeah. about you're, having- you're a god now, so don't worry. No, yeah. Well, that, that, I know how short lived that can be. Um, <laughs> and so, look, I've got a, an amazing staff. I've got a very, we have a very supportive group of owners. And I also know that in my conversation with supporters that I do on a regular basis uh, at a a regular cadence throughout the year, I do know they appreciate the hard work that goes in. And I'm not talking about me. I think they appreciate and understand that not every club allows supporters to come to training um, at the right times. They, that they um, going back to day one, that they allow supporters to design their whole section, to choose what beer they have, to, have this real relationship, but I think that's been an an incredibly positive one. But in all of our relationships, as you get the closer you get, there's often friction. But I think it's been, uh, if there has been any conflict, it's been constructive. It really has. You guys have done a great job trying to include uh, fans. You know, look, I'm in Hawaii. I've been traveling forever and never have missed an LAFC game from day one. And, um, you know, to be fair, we have people in here that are from Uruguay that are in Ireland, uh, Scotland. I mean, and, and so it just shows what you guys have built. So that's a big that's a big ups to you guys, John. I mean, you guys have done a great job trying to make sure that we are in the in, in the know. Um, and so we do appreciate with that, you know, so, so go ahead. Absolutely. Man. And, and listen, I think your job more than anything is to try to make everybody happy. And, you know, if, if you know that there's one thing it's really hard to do is make everyone happy, but talk to us a little bit about the influence that the coaching staff have on your decisions and how important it is for you to be in the same page with them. I'll give you an example. Mark Dos Santos works very close with Donio Herring, which, uh, uh, was recently waived by Los Angeles. Um, you know, I see also the Los Angeles galaxy ball brought a lot of the players that Greg Vanny was used to having with him in Toronto to play with him. So kind of like his guys, if you may. But talk to us a bit about having, you know, now that Bob Bradley's gone and, and you have a new a, a new staff, you know, being on the same page with those guys. You mentioned a little bit already with Ilya Sanchez and what you, you were looking for, what Dolo was looking for. But how is that partnership working out and how important it is that it, ha- it, it, it your guys are all thinking together? Yeah, I've I've heard it said that the most important relationship in a sports organization is that uh, the the relationship between the general manager and the coach. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. You could maybe make the argument that it's coach with his captain or or others. Regardless, it's very important. And I think while the coaches are different, our process and way of working has not changed. So we do not have a soccer czar that decides everything in a vacuum and has autonomy to do whatever they want. There are checks and balances put in place um, that ensure that we are working in a way that is reflective of a collaborative culture. And so the importance of me being on the same page with Steve, with our coaches, I mean, we've had, you know, Mark was our coach. He left, he came back. We've had new coaches come in this year. And I think one thing that is affirming of how we work, and I'm not saying this is the only way to work, but the way we work is that people notice when they come from another club and they come here, they are 
surprised whether this is our new technical director, our new goalie coach, but they are surprised at the level of collaboration that takes place when we make player decisions. So as we now are talking, you started off asking about the DP, every single coach, every single scout, everybody is aware of everybody we're talking about and everybody has a voice. Now, are some voices weighted a little bit more heavily than others? For sure. That's part of, yes. you know, an organizational dynamic, but mm -hmm. everybody has a say and we have meetings. It's not me and Steve and we lock a door. It's not me telling Steve, this is who we're signing. It's not Steve telling me who we're signing. It's a, it's a collaborative process that again, as I mentioned before, we're humans, there can be friction, there can be uh, aggressive conversation, but we are on the same page. We all want the same thing, which is, success for LAFC and I've always said and I'm stealing this from Steve Jobs <laughs> it doesn't we all as long as we all agree that we're going in this direction like you can discuss the route right okay. like how do we get there which player what's the profile as long as we're all on the same page and we start without foundation of where we want to go that where it is acceptable as long as we're not saying okay I'm trying to go to San Francisco. You're going to San Diego. Like that is a dysfunction. And thankfully we do not have that. Uh, Steve is, which was part of why he was the right choice. Was he understood that he'd been a part of our culture for a year. He knew how we made decisions. And that also was his nature. Steve is not a control freak who wants to say, it, you know, he, he wants the requisite level of control that you would want as a head coach, but no more. And everybody you know, stays in their lane. And then, and then it blurs when you have this Venn diagram of decision makers that, that come together. Awesome. Yeah. If I can uh, kind of throw one more, one more at you, it's more uh, MLS is a very complicated uh, salary cap structure with designated players. Now the U22 Tam jam, mm -hmm. most people in MLS have no idea how any of it works. So, you know, for me personally, I, I love it. I'm fascinated by it. And, a small segment. How do you feel about the salary cap rules? Do you think uh, they're almost needlessly complicated or do you enjoy the kind of game within a game that it, that it gives us? Uh, both. I think, uh, I've, you know, we, I know I've been in this league since 2005 as a player. Then I was an executive of the players association. And now uh, in these various roles that I've had at, at LAFC. So, I know the rules. Um, I also know that it seems much easier to just flick a switch and simplify something. It's a lot harder in practice, given that you have existing contracts, you have existing rules. You can't just sort of turn a page and ignore what's what's happened previously. So we have a great staff that knows the rules, um, that has experience in the league, that enables us to make good, wise, and judicious decisions. And so – would I personally have a few suggestions as to how we can simplify things to make things potentially better and easier? Yes. And there are forums in which we can talk to the league and share these things, which I do. And, but also I understand why some of the rules are in place. Um, and ultimately these decisions are made by owners with input from us. Um, so to piggyback off that, you know, over the weekend, we seen that the sporting director, Ernst Tanner was like, he, he put a thing, an interview out that he felt fooled, uh, that we got them on Tam's deal. When you see stuff like that, does that just sort of like, what, what kind of response do you even have to that? Like fooled? like you sort of went by the rules. You didn't do anything that no one else couldn't do. So how could they be fooled? Uh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know the full extent of the, the comments, I suppose, given that I know, like, I don't even, given that I know we didn't cheat, I guess it's a compliment. Yeah, I right? think it is, too. I think you it's know, a compliment. Um, I uh, mean, you outgame, our, you outgame them in five yeah, years. <laughs> our, our integrity and how we operate as a club is, like, we take that incredibly seriously. I personally take that seriously. Larry, as our co-president, takes that seriously. Our CFO, our owners. We take that incredibly seriously. So any sort of implication that we're doing anything other than um, what is fully above board is, you know, completely misguided representation and is frankly insulting um, and disrespectful, frankly, to the player, to the club 
and, for, and to the league, actually, yeah, because what you're basically saying to the league office is you have a club that totally duped you, which so frankly, it's just this, you know, it's this. I don't pay much attention to it. But if that is what was implied and look, I, I would happily like we actually have a portal that all GMs have access to that gives you the contract. So that it's not like you can't hide. I mean, I suppose if so, if, I'll, I'll flip it a different way. I wish I personally had enough money to even have the ethical <laughs> conversation and question to be like, how am I going to pay Gareth Bale an extra $8 million from my pocket from some <laughs> offshore account? Like, I'm unfortunately not in a position to even have that ethical dilemma, which I know the answer would be I wouldn't do it anyways. But like, I suppose the only way I could do it is if one of our owners, which I know their integrity and their honesty, were willing to do something and lie about it constantly to the league and what have you. So I don't even understand the implication. Yeah. I think I can understand the, and look, like I was surprised that we did it right. Like it was just something that I was saying like, Oh, coming oh, yeah. into the season, uh, once the window opens, we're going to sign, um, a guy that's won a world cup, uh, that's just played in the Italian cup final. And then, uh, the current champions league winner is going to come on 10. Like, I was surprised too. So I understand the, the sort of reaction, but then any indication that it was anything other than us taking advantage of the stage we offer and the opportunity, our city and our yeah, supporters yeah. and whatever that we offer these players, that any insinuation that is anything other than that, it's just ridiculous. And I mean, yeah. it's also was at the press conference today, but what I said, when I introduced, I don't call it an introduction. Gareth is already here, but mm -hmm. I thank everybody at LAFC who has built something that now makes this a destination of choice. And that's not me. That's our supporters. I thank them. That's our owners. That's our staff. And frankly, it's our players too. Like, absolutely. I have no but doubt. It's you. But it's you. You did a good job getting you, you, here. You're you, raising he, the standard. He said you, he you, said you a lot. For you, did a, you did a yeah, big job. This is a comment of someone that knows that the standard has been raised. And even if you're a, a, a winning organization on the other side, you're going to have to put a little bit more effort to put players in and, and want them to play there. And this is happening in other sports. And I believe Los Angeles uh, is just seeing this too, like, you know, in, in, in a major league soccer. Yeah. True. And I think just the last point is I, I think I, I can't help but th actually I know this because they both said it. They know we're in first place, right? Like <laughs> they want to win. They so, want to win. Yeah, so that was also... And they came so here and parked the bus. I'll never forget the game. <laughs> yeah. And, and they, Fall let us know about it. You remember that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I thank everybody that has been a part of LAFC, and that's from supporters to owners, everybody, that now this is a, a destination of choice. And I think if we do this right and continue to build, then we'll only see more of this. Yeah, listen, you're uh, a pioneer. God, you're you. doing something nobody else does. That's how I see yeah. you. And now people are going to have to do what you know you, what you just carved for them. And, this is and how I'll... things change. Change comes when someone does something that nobody else expects them to. So great job. Yeah, right. I think I think history is going to look at this as one of the greatest transfer windows of any team in the 26 years of MLS. So congratulations for kind of being the architect and the masterminder or the guy that made that all happen. And, uh, you know, really, really, we're, we all couldn't be more happy with it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to well, let you, I'm going to let you go, John, but I got one last question. The comments are going crazy. Everybody wants to know what is going on with Arango. It's up to you. If you want to, if you want to answer yeah. the question, everybody's saying Arango, Arango, please ask about Arango. So I'm asking you about Arango. Yeah, sure. So obviously, uh, Arango just scored the game winner in El Clasico. <laughs> <laughs> he has been scoring on a regular basis and he's been incredible since he's been here. And we, we recognize that. And, you know, not just for Arango, but there's going to be real competition for places. And I think that is why we're seeing these performances from people is that there is real competition. That competition is going to increase when Brian comes back from injury, when Bale gets up to speed, when Carlos continues his form to jury Shradi's coming back, you, you know, Danny Masovsky had a, uh, had an unfortunate injury, but yeah, Mahala who helped us win the game. So it's great. And I want to see that everywhere across the field, but no, Chicho has been as an incredible goal scoring record since he's been here. He's been a, a great signing for us. He's a great guy. Um, he's been a, a great soldier. I mean, he, he just does everything that's asked. So um, I trust that I asked the question. I think, I think it, it touches on a theme though, is like, what, what is, what, 
explain why you're doing all these things. Everything is done to win, right? Like, how do we improve our team? And we saw these two guys as additions to a strong group. This is not resetting about this is this group is really strong and Arango's a part of that. And now how do we add pieces and every subsequent decision we make is 100% done with the question, is this going to help us win now and into the future? And that's how we make our decisions. Well, John, you have been absolutely amazing. Thank you so yeah. much for taking time. I know you are one of the busiest guys right now. So thank you so much for taking where, time and sitting uh, down there with us. Where are you in Hawaii? I'm in Oahu. Nice. Yeah. And you come back for games? Uh, so, so I've lived in California for 20 plus years. Uh, my wife is from here. We had our kid the, in um, the year of the 18th, so I didn't make the to okay. an LAFC match then. I have oh. not been to an LAFC match. Have never missed one though. Okay. Um, so it's a shame because I had a little bitty baby, and then we were traveling. But uh, yeah. as I was traveling around the United States, we would pull over and make sure I had Wi-Fi to watch it. That's Wife awesome. is completely uh, understanding. She lets me do it. And uh, we will be at a game on the 18th in September. So I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. It's going to be awesome. Um, but, yeah, man, the, the fact that you came on our show, we just started on Spaces a year ago. And the fact that you came on here to talk with us means a lot. So I love, really, really uh, appreciate that. I love these conversations. And I think our supporters and your listeners, they deserve – you know, real talk from us. And that's always been a part of our DNA from the beginning. Um, I would just encourage you. Um, I say that football is the most important of the less important things. So babies, wives, things like that, you're, you're, you're doing right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, she, she, uh, she, she's like, okay, what day is your game? All right. We got to travel around this day. And I'm like, thanks, babe. I appreciate yeah. that. So she's she, like she, conversations she I have at my own house. <laughs> she yeah, completely so understands. We all have them, man. Yeah. Yeah, where, yeah. Eric and Celsa, where are you? Where are you guys? I, um, I'm in Atwater Village on the east side. Oh, um, you're a hipster. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> I've, I've I've been on this side of town. He's since, also a Palmeiras uh, fan. Just, ah, yes. and uh, my my wife is from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Kind of rekindled okay. her love because it gets so serious there that there's so much tragedy associated that she didn't want anything to do with a sport like that. Right. Yeah. Came to a game here on a date, saw the tailgating and kids and families and fell in love with the game again. Yeah. And uh, for myself, I'm a season ticket holder from the very first game. I've missed four home games across all competition since oh. LAFC has started. Awesome. Yeah, well, I think yeah. another thing, like when you talk about what sort of your wife saw as an issue with going and supporting live football – um, I also credit our supporters. They're a class act. I, even after Friday, I get all the reports. Were there any incidents and what have you? And that that yeah. those intense rivalries are ripe for things to happen. And our supporters are super. You, you know the what, what happened at uh, I think it was the Atlas game earlier this year. I think really changed a lot for MLS supporters groups oh, of really yeah. seeing well, we don't want this in our game. We <laughs> we love the rivalry, but we want it to be nice. And I. I guess the last thing, my wife is from a Paul Maris family, three generations. Oh, wow. So when a Twesta went there, I was able to get her whole family a Twesta LAFC jerseys. We awesome. went to Allianz Park down there. Oh, my Twesta jersey. Everybody's excited. This is last Christmas. And uh, this this was a Christmas gift for me with my wife's family, me and for the first time that will always be special awesome. that this happened. Yeah, I talked to Edward uh, not long ago. He's doing well. Good. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah, living he's... in the city that I was born, Sao Paulo. You know, again, I've been living in LA now for a very long time and close to Thousand Oaks. I'm also a season ticket holder. It's my third year. Started just basically taking my daughter to a game. The Miami game was the first one for me. Uh, you know, and again, I fell in our love with opener, the environment. Our opener. Yeah. The first game essentially that we had against them. That yeah. was the first game that I saw it live. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I got to be a part of this more closely. And, you know, the rest is history. I mean, the environment, uh, you know, the. It embodies what Los Angeles meant to me as a transplant coming into the city about 15 years ago. So to yeah. me, all the elements are here to make this, what this brand, I'm gonna call it a brand, this team represents, you know, it's, it's a lot about what this community is, what this place that we call Los Angeles means for all yeah. of us. That's our, that's been our goal. Like we have said, we want to be a club that wherever you, and I'm also a trans, I moved here when I was two, so I'm very sort of, domestic, I, I, I am, I sort of was raised my whole life here, but I also, my parents are immigrants. We came here. And so, but our, our goal from the beginning was 
you have this amazing mosaic of a city and um, and I say and I say this to players too that wherever you're from you will find a home in Los Angeles it's this beautiful mosaic no of different question. things yeah. and you don't like New York you have to kind of become like a New Yorker whereas LA you could stay yourself you find your own home and it's this beautiful like it it combines into this beautiful mosaic and how it sounds super abstract but how can we represent that on the field and that's been our intention so when people like you who say hey, I came from a footballing country and I come to LA now and I see that, that affirms that we are taking steps right to track. deliver our promise to the city. Yeah, no, and the young true. people will continue to be tied because you have really good people, uh, you know, on the brand, like guys like Rich, yeah. they are doing the right thing, getting to the play, you know, to, to the young minds, right? Because again, we're all old farts, you know, we've had our kids, <laughs> but I think, I think you started something, you all started something, a culture uh, you know, change in this city that will live for many, many years. I do not believe this is just, you know, the new it thing that you know, it's, it's a real deal. And I, I can tell you that being a person that's watched uh, Serie A for a long time, I never could get behind MLS. And I remember watching the first time I, I had seen anything about when you guys were on stage and we knew that the name was going to be LAFC and all this stuff. And I remember telling my wife, like, I'm this is the team I'm going to follow. Like, I follow Juve. And when we had our daughter in Santa Monica Hospital. On uh, in September 14th, y'all played a game three days later, and you better believe I have that baby on my ch chest, That's and awesome. I'm jumping and I'm yelling, and the nurses are like, "What in the world?" And I'm like, "I'm watching football." And the baby and the <laughs> dog—I mean, it was beautiful, and, and that's just what LAFC gives us. And so we appreciate awesome. you for that, John. So thank and you so how, much, man. I'm sure your leaders, that your your listeners aren't here to listen to me and uh, ask you guys questions, but how did no, you guys really? connect? Uh, I started the spaces space on on Twitter. And I started talking about LAFC with two other people. And next thing you know, I started growing and growing. And I kept on reaching out to people saying, hey, man, if you love this club, I love this club. Let's talk about this club. Let's talk about football. I needed I needed people to interact with because I wasn't in L.A. And I wanted to feel uh, the 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 shoulder to shoulder, you know. And um, and so I kept on uh, meeting people. Celso does numbers. And so I was like, well, if I'm going to get into this, I need to have a numbers guy. Mm -hmm. We started talking. He does all the numbers. He does all of our stats, everything that we need for any of our website, for any the LAFC website that we have uh, our website and yep. then Eric you know he um he's new to learning football but he's very intelligent on it and he also knows a lot about contracts so we started trying to understand how contracts worked and we broke it down so yep. in our spaces that's what we were talking about and then people was like hey man I really like this so we decided to do it on a on a video so this is our first year doing it awesome. yeah yeah no for myself I'm a, I'm a crossover NFL fan uh, when LAFC was was uh reaching out that they were going to be a thing and you could put down your deposit for season tickets. I, you know, I owned a business and I was like, ah, season tickets for a sports thing would be cool. So mm -hmm. I signed up and, and got, got into it. And, you know, it, I always love following NFL and the salary cap rules and all that. It's like, again, I love that game within a game, which I love. I kind of love how convoluted MLS is as well, because, yeah. you know, I, I just nerd out on it. And uh, yeah. yeah, I got, I just fell in love with soccer, you know, never really, like most American kids, I played it till I was eight years old and then I played baseball, you know? Right. And, uh, and now like what you've done, I think, and what LAFC has done to try to just grow the game here. Now I want to see the game grow here in the United States. And sure, I think yeah. what you're building, if there's a great legacy of what MLS and the LAFC coming, I think how you've done it is going to help grow the game across the whole, the whole country. And I think that's really at the end, the contribution that you all are doing for the game here. And so I think it's yeah. a beautiful thing. You and Apple, right? Which is this new TV deal we're very excited about. It's going to, oh, wow. you know, create eyeballs yeah. all over the world. You know, everybody's going to see that we're not a retirement league. Like, unfortunately, the British yep. lady, uh, you know, asked Mayo about. Uh, I don't like learn. that question, by the way. But, <laughs> They'll learn yeah. or not. You know what I mean? So ultimately to me, uh, you know, these eyeballs have to see what we're all about and, and what the quality of these El Trafico games are, where we have five beautiful goals, you know, or, or, or well orchestrated, not bad goals at all so you know the the quality of the soccer is going up and i think just having more eyeballs right is through gambling fantasy football yeah. or you just just essentially just having the ability to stream a game you know is what is going to get us to the next level and of course the world cup in 2026 i cannot wait yeah. for that well i think so. we're it, we're at this and we're, we're like starting up the and after the inflection point i think things are things are on on the up and i i turned to one of our assistants before the game friday right before we huddled up and I played in the league for like nine years. And I was like, I never had a game like a regular season game in MLS that feels like this just didn't exist. 
Yeah, like there is exactly. no, there is nothing like it. There's yeah, no rivalry yeah. like it. There's no, you know, and people talk about which is better and what have you. There's nothing like, and you can talk about history and you can't rewrite history. We've only been around for this long, but like the fact that we are, we overlap in the same city is very different from being in a different, in the same region. And like every single person that is associated with LAFC knows the consequences of that game. Like it's, yes. it's not three points. It's not one, it's not another game. It's like, if this doesn't go well, we are going to be miserable until we beat them. That's right. <laughs> you know, like we're yes, going to all true. just be like, you got to be kidding me, you know? And everybody knows that. And so I just turned and I was just like, this is awesome. Like I never had a feeling like that in MLS where a regular season game felt like do or die. That's true. It's true. Yeah. It's, it's, it's how the Dodgers thing to are me when they is play. Ohio State, it's Michigan, because I'm a, a NCAA yeah. football fan, and the closest thing to me is that kind of rivalry you get in college between two rival schools, and yeah. and, and yeah, and that's a stretch of a comparison because I think it's very different, but uh, but it's, you're tapping into that type of emotion, you know, that kind of almost pseudo hey, I want to call it right because ultimately when the game's over, you go home and, and, and yeah. It's the but end then of it. you go home, and you I think, think about it. Yeah, and like. <laughs> Look, and I think we've done a really good – we have so much traction in all of Los Angeles. But, like, you go home, and I certainly know that they'll – if you're a Galaxy fan and you go home, you're going to see an LAFC person, like, in the next <laughs> couple of days. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's different from – Play nice in the sandbox. Yeah, that's different from <laughs> Seattle and Portland where it's like, okay, game's over, go home, we go home, we don't see each other. This is, Very like, true. an everyday reminder, and it's – it's unlike anything else. It's, it's, it's funny that you say that because I did get a message. And the guy was like, oh, this win was so much more sweet because when I went to the gym today, I actually got to wear my LAFC yeah. stuff and make all of them eat crow because of what, you know, so that that's that's so true. It's like real consequence, not just three it points is. and not just position at a table, but it's like it's real consequence. And it's uh, it's bragging rights. It's it's a lot. And everybody knows that it's not a surprise. Like before the game, everybody knows that. And. Yeah, I'm just really proud that the guys delivered in the way they did on Friday. Yeah, Rich's right. picture of uh, Raheem Edwards says it all. So yeah, that picture is worth a thousand words. That. And that picture of Rich that he oh, posted against the other. Yeah, well, it's it beautiful. beautiful. Raheem well, Edwards, you know, we love him. And, you know, because he's ready. Not anymore, we don't. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, just being nice because JT is Okay, here. we got to let John, we got to let <laughs> him go. John, we we, we so went much. way over our time. Back to your family. Thanks for being patient with me. And, uh, this was a pleasure. It was great connecting with you guys. Thank you. Yep. Please Absolutely. come on Anytime again. Anytime you want to come back, we're here. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate right. it so much. Thank you so much. Thank man. you. Take care, guys.